In the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft, five quarterbacks were taken, and in fact three in the first three picks. So there was definitely a lot of hype for these guys to go off. But so far, it's been rough to say the least. Five yards to be exact, second down two. Watch both ways. Here comes Wilson, deflected. It's reeled in. Like I said before, there are five quarterbacks taken in the first round. Trevor Lawrence to Jacksonville, Zach Wilson to New York, Trey Lance to San Francisco, Justin Fields to Chicago, and Mac Jones to New England. With such a large batch of talent, you would think that there would be a stud in the mix. But so far, the only decent play has come from Mac Jones and Trey Lance in his extremely limited experience. By limited, I mean that he threw one pass as a backup, so I wouldn't even count him with all his colleagues. Upon that, I know that there are other rookie quarterbacks who have played like Davis Mills, but I just wanted to focus on the Fab Five like many would say. Anyways, every other first round quarterback outside of Trey has been given a chance to start, and let's just say it's been interesting to watch unfold. Of the guys I'm going to be talking about, Mac Jones seemingly has the most promise, and it's interesting considering that he was the last quarterback taken in the first round. Going 15th overall after his near Heisman performance in 2020 was a bit of a surprise, but seemed to put him in one of the best situations of the bunch. Although it was looking like recently signed Cam Newton was going to start, after his solid performance in the preseason, Mac was able to earn the starting spot over him for week 1. Crazy enough, Mac showed the team enough for them to let go of Cam during the final roster cuts, and so there were some pretty high expectations on him going into week 1 against Miami. Facing a team with his former Bama buds and Tua Tagovailoa and Jalen Waddell must have been extra fuel to the fire for him to do his thing and prove why he deserved a start. Going 29 of 39 with over 280 yards and a touchdown was not too shabby of a stat line, but it just wasn't enough for Big Mac to win his first start as the team was barely edged out 17 to 16. Although he probably would have preferred a win in his first game with New England, Mac seemingly showed enough in the back and forth effort to have people interested in what he can do next. The following week was almost an ideal matchup for Big Mac against arguably the worst team in football in the New York Jets, so I'm sure he was looking to put up some legit stats. Even though the team went pretty easily, 25-6, it wasn't as much based off of Mac's play as it was good old Zach's awful performance. When the imposing quarterback throws 4 picks, it's pretty easy to win no matter the case, and all Mac had to do was put up nearly 200 yards as they smacked the Jets. Through his first two weeks with the team, Mac looked pretty good, but hadn't really proven much, so a matchup against the off and on New Orleans Saints seemed like a great testing ground to see just how good he could be. After starting off slow, Mac tried to get the Patriots back in contention, until a pick six silenced any shot at redemption as the team lost 28-13. In what was Mac's worst performance by far, he passed for 270 yards, a touchdown, and three picks as he just wasn't able to get into any sort of rhythm the entire game. After such a sour performance, Mac is looking to prove that he has the sauce against Tampa Bay, so it should be interesting to watch, but I have a feeling it might be a rough day for the former Bama boy. Nonetheless, of the four, I'd put Mac at the top so far, and I think he has a great deal of potential. The first overall pick out of Clemson in Trevor Lawrence has struggled quite a bit through his first few games. Joining a Jacksonville team with the new head coach in Urban Meyer made the whole first year process interesting to say the least and had many curious about what the two could do. Crazy enough, Trevor was not the only Clemson stud to join the team, as his running back in Travis Etienne was taken later in the first round. Although the two were looking to do their thing on the next level, sadly a Liz Frank injury put Travis out for the entire season, and Trevor was left alone. A rough way to start off a rookie year for my man, but nonetheless he was still focused on doing his thing and wanted to show out against the division rival in Houston. Although it seemed like a pretty great matchup for Trevor and the Jags to go up against a team without their star quarterback, it was much more difficult than many would have thought. In that game, Trevor passed for over 330 yards and 3 touchdowns, but had to rough 3 picks as the team lost 37-21 to start off the year with an L. Although it was such a sad way to begin his rookie season, Trevor was looking to bounce back against Stanford, but once again struggled quite a bit in mile high as he ended up passing for under 120 yards and one touchdown with two picks as the team lost 23-13. Although he lost week 1 to Houston, his play in that game was not too bad, but against the Broncos he passed for under 50% and upon that had under 4 yards per pass. Following his underwhelming performance in Denver, it seemed like writing on the wall that he would struggle against the Cardinals, and I would say the predictions were right. 
Although he passed for over 200 yards and had a 60% completion percentage, two picks to only one touchdown is never good to have and led to the team losing 31-19. With back-to-back-to-back -back -back losses and underwhelming play the first few weeks, Trevor went into Cincinnati hoping to turn the ship around, and although the team was up 14-0 at half, Burrow and Bengals were able to rally back and ended up winning 24-21. Although it was yet another loss, I would say it was Trevor's best performance to date with over 200 yards and a rushing touchdown as he was able to move the ball pretty well against a decent Bengals defense. Even with the 0-4 record, I think Trevor still has some potential to improve his game with time, but it's really just up to him. Although he was selected 11th overall, Chicago had recently acquired Andy Dalton from Dallas and so it makes sense that Justin would be the backup. Andy's playing camp reinforced this idea, and going into week 1 against LA, he was the starter. Going up against a team as talented as the Rams is a tough thing to ask out of a new quarterback, and so it only makes sense that Andy struggled, and not only just him, but the team, as they lost by 20. Although a worrisome play, Andy started once again for Cincinnati, and was doing pretty well until a knee injury took him out of the game and threw Justin into the spotlight. In what was some of his first real game action as a rookie, Justin was not able to do much of anything against the Bengals, with exactly 60 yards, under 50% completion percentage, and a pick. Underwhelming stats to say the least, but when you consider the defensive play by Cincinnati this year, it's not too big of a shock. Even though it was not the greatest performance, Joe Burrow's three straight picks gave the Bears some cushion as they took the win 20-17. Nonetheless, following the poor showing, Justin was looking to bounce back against Cleveland in anything but an easy matchup. From beginning to end, Justin could legitimately do next to nothing in Cleveland as he had under 70 yards passing and a terrible 30% completion percentage as the team got steamrolled 26-6. Coming off of one of his worst performances as a football player is tough, but at least he's going up against the Lions. Anyways, in terms of where I would put him among the four, I would say that he's the second worst but still a decent bit ahead of the guy I'm going to talk about next. Last, and sadly the least, is the second pick, Zach Wilson, who was just screwed from the beginning by being put on one of the worst teams in sports. Although there was hope going into the season, with a new head coach in Robert Sala and a bunch of offseason acquisitions, the team is right back where it was last year. From top to bottom, the team is awful, and my man Zach Wilson cannot do anything. Although he started off with a solid 250 yard and 2 touchdown game against Carolina, the performance was not enough to win, and looking back was seemingly their only shot to do so. You would think that the team would be able to at least compete with New England the following week, but Zach's not one, not two, not three, but four interceptions killed the Jets' chances at coming even remotely close to their first win as they got smoked 25-6. A four-pick game is tough to come back from but a matchup against Denver was not the worst situation to have the next week. In what was shaping up to be a defining game for the future of not only Zach, but the Jets as a whole, New York got demolished 26 to nothing. Although Zach didn't throw 4 picks this time, 0 touchdowns and 2 interceptions was not enough to get a single point on the board, and leaves many including myself thinking that he is one of the worst rookies in the entire draft class. Looking ahead, it's now really just on Zach and the Jets to prove otherwise, but it's going to be a tough road out of the garbage. Lance, off the play fake, first pass, and it's a touchdown! Usually when you have a draft class with a bunch of highly recruited quarterbacks, you usually get some duds, some average players, and then some great players. But this year is seemingly different. Outside of Trey Lance, every single first round rookie quarterback has struggled a ton, and seemed to be much worse than anticipated. Trey could be great, or he could be as bad as his fellow colleagues, but I don't think we'll find out for a little bit, so all we have to work off is the other four. To say that I'm a little worried that every first round quarterback is going to be a bust is an understatement, and if it were the case it would be insane considering the hype surrounding them, but I guess only time will tell. What do you guys think about all this? Is this the worst quarterback class ever? Comment down below which quarterback you would take out of the bunch. Anyways, it seems like the hype was a bit too much for these rookie quarterbacks. So now all you can do is watch to see what they can do. With 5 quarterbacks going in the top 15 picks, many thought that these guys would do their thing, or at least play decent. But the struggle is definitely real, and has many questioning if they have what it takes to win football games. A lot of time, directing traffic, gonna go deep, has a man deep, it is! Caught for the 
touchdown! Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, it would be awesome if you guys could subscribe, like, and comment down below stuff you want next. But anyways, see you all soon, and peace out.